The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. And joining me today on the panel is Thomas Sanurjo. Hi, Thomas. Hey, Dom. How's it going? Very well, thanks. It's just the two of us this week. Uh, we had uh, some last-minute ch- uh, changes. Someone had uh, something come up, so uh, it's just the two of us. And uh, we're going to be talking about a topic that is quite topical, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Uh, but also something that we've been planning to talk about for a while uh, because it's an, it's an important, uh, useful topic. We're going to talk about job hunting in, the, in 2020, what it's like, what, what, how, and how technology contributes to looking for a job these days. And as we've seen uh, in the, the first seven months, almost six and a half months of this year, uh, job hunting has suddenly become a big thing again. Uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll talk about some of the tools and some of the websites and some of those things that, that could be useful. So, Definitely. Um, but before we get to that, I, I did have a, a tiny bit of follow-up from last week. Last time we talked about uh, smart home, the sort of an introduction to smart home by smart devices, things you can add to your home. And one of the things I, I kind of complained about was the ring camera, the, you know, the uh, ring camera system from Amazon and that it, I was constantly getting alerts on my outdoor cameras when, you know, a chipmunk or a squirrel would run past or the wind would blow the, the bushes around. Uh, and I'm like, ah, why can't you put person detection in those cameras? Like you did in the, uh, in the uh, doorbell. Well, they must have been listening because just today, <laughs> in fact, I noticed that I have uh, there was a new option. I wish they told me this. I, I could have been there for a month for all I know. But if I notice a new option in the camera settings for person detection and they and it's off by default because they say it can cause the camera to activate slower because it has to do all of the work of figuring out whether that's a person or not. So. It, that's one of the, the 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 dings against Ring versus say Google's uh, cameras is the Nest cameras is the Nest cameras are always recording, which some people kind of get creeped out about. Uh, but mm-hmm. it means that when it when it detects something, it can go back and say, "Oh yeah, keep ten seconds prior to the to detecting that or whatever it is." Whereas Ring sometimes it won't catch all of the action, like the person is halfway out of the camera range by the time. Uh, it gets activated. So, but a- at least it's not ringing constantly with false alarms because the wind is blowing my bushes around. So, so. squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> literally squirrel. <laughs> so, I mean, I did get to see a lot of uh, nighttime wildlife in my yard. Like, uh, right. uh, uh, I got we have uh, uh, possums and we have skunks. Although the skunks, you could tell, are out there. Anyway, right. uh, just smell them. Uh, yeah, all sorts of uh, animal life out there. So, uh, but yeah, I'm glad not to to be seeing those. Not exactly what you were looking for with the <laughs> with the camera on your door, right? Yes, that wasn't the purpose of getting the camera. The game cameras was not in my 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 mental uh, <laughs> calculations there. All right, so uh, that that we'll be talking more. Like I said, we'll be talking more about smart home stuff in our upcoming episodes. But uh, I just wanted to, to bring that up because I just noticed it today. So what our main topic, like I said, is about job hunting. And there's a couple different areas I'd like to talk about because, frankly, in my years in the workforce, job hunting has changed very much. Mm. Uh, you know, I've I've been in the job force for, you know, I don't know, 25 years or something like that. Um, probably more than that. I'm just not going to do the math. And, uh, <laughs> you know, when I started out, it was newspaper classifieds and you know, printed resumes that you would hand to somebody at a desk. Right. Uh, well, it's you not go, like you would go somewhere and like ask for the HR person and yes. they would give you a phone number to call or, or connect you with an actual person. Yeah. Here is a, or when I first graduated high school, getting a summer job, here's an application. I remember like spending mm, three yeah. weeks <laughs> at the beginning of the summer, driving to every business that I could find asking, asking if they were hiring and for the summer and getting applications. Uh, uh, which was fun, but but it's all different now, and and it's probably uh, a lot different even in the past few years. Um, 
And I'm kind of hoping that I never have to do this. I'd like I'd like to keep doing what I'm doing now <laughs> with SQPN. Uh, if, uh, but, you know, it, it could happen again, I suppose. So we want to talk about what tools are out there, what ways to find jobs. And the, the first step is, I, I guess, to figure out, um, well, let's talk about job listings, like where we find job potential jobs out there. Uh, what what Tom's what what are good places to look for jobs um, that are out there now? Well, you really have a lot of options, and I think uh, what you want to do is narrow it down more than uh, anything, because uh, a lot of companies have their own hiring uh, website that they're using, so they're using some kind of staffing website, and so it's really hard to go to like one central area to find it. it used to be Monster dot com, and that was that's kind of gone by the wayside, uh, but Indeed dot com is a really good uh, site to get your resume posted and to connect with some of these, uh, jobs that, that companies are putting out there. And they'll also give you like a, a range of salaries and things like that. Um, it's a great spot that I've found. I've, I've ha had a lot of uh, good success finding jobs that I'm interested in on there. And I think, uh, and I'll talk about this a little more later, but the really important thing is to make sure that you start collecting the descriptions of the jobs as they are posted. So if, if you're interested in a job, copy that description into plain text and hold on to that description and keep making a record of what the descriptions of the jobs you like look like. Why would the why would that be important to uh -huh. save that? When you go to your to make your resume, uh, one of the things that you're going to want to do is make sure that the skills that you have on your resume match up with the skills that they are looking for in those jobs, uh, because everything's done by algorithms anymore. Right. So, re regardless of what you put on your resume and how much it, how much it might be a real benefit to the company, if it does not match nearly word for word what is on that that job description, uh, it's going to be uh, kind of pointless for you to put the resume in for that job. Interesting. So the so what we're trying to do because companies get so many resumes now, they're using computer uh, scanning or what what have you to 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 go through the resumes and pull out some percentage of the ones that sort of that fit the job description. Is right. what you're saying? Okay. And so the days of this is my resume, my single resume that I spend hours laboriously creating and the one <laughs> the one resume I'm going to hand out to everybody those days are gone right oh yeah you you should not have one resume in fact your your resume uh the the advice that I've been given uh because I am currently looking for a job in the tech field I'm I'm moving into the security and network analyst uh type position which is a skill that I have but I but it's not on my resume and so I'm kind of having to go back through and rework my resume to to fit this uh, but one of the one of the pieces of advice that I was given was for a job that you really want, look to spend about an hour reworking your resume to fit that job. OK. And if you're just kind of shooting out there in the dark, trying to grab some random stuff, you know, maybe 15 minutes per job that you're applying for that way. But it's a real investment sitting down to make sure that you rewrite that whole resume for a job. But once you get good at it, once you get quick at it and you know what you're looking for and know how to do it. Um, which there's some tools that we'll talk about, about resume creation and, and job scanning. Uh, some, some paid, some free, but uh, they'll, they'll help you figure out how to rewrite that resume for any given job that you're looking for. Interesting. And well, I just want to clarify, we're not talking about, you know, um, deceptively, you know, putting things on your resume that you didn't actually do. We're just right. talking about writing the truth, but writing it using the, the certain phrases and words that, that match up with what's in the job description exactly yeah so you you need to make sure that you know yeah and, and it's just it's it can be really small things but it's uh you know if, if they're looking for a person who is an applications developer you need to make sure that you have the words applications developer in your resume if that's something that you've done whereas maybe a software developer is a different thing even though you might think of it as the same thing that right. that tiny little minutia is going to throw you off in the algorithm search. Right. And so maybe you've put down software developer, but you need to be putting down application developer for this particular job. Right. Okay. Even though they, like you said, they can, they're almost interchangeable phrases, but put the exactly. right phrase that matches. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned indeed.com. There's one I want to, uh, site I want to mention uh, that I've known about for years. And in fact, I know the guy who started it. 
um, years back. And in fact, I used it <laughs> a few times back in the day. Uh, for those, for particularly for our audience, uh, because we do things from a Catholic perspective, CatholicJobs.com is a useful tool if you're looking for jobs specifically either within the Catholic sphere, like often whether it's in Catholic colleges or Catholic parishes or dioceses or other Catholic uh, apostolates organizations. Sometimes it's specifically Catholic things like uh, director of music or uh, or things that are not specifically Catholic, like accounting manager, but for a um you know, Catholic school or Catholic organization. Um, I'm, I'm looking at their front page right now, and I see uh, Franciscan University of Steubenville is looking for a director of Franciscan Life Online, which uh, I know I actually looked at it earlier because that's my alma mater, so I, I'm interested in what they're doing. But it's a, in this new era we're in, there's going to be many more students who are going to be remote learning. And so this person's job is going to be helping create that Franciscan way of life, student life, through an online experience, which is a very interesting position. But they, they, it's, it's just like the other ones. It has all that information, but it's, this is very focused on uh, Catholic jobs. So I, I, I would recommend that if that's, if that's something you're looking at. Uh, Jack, Definitely. who is going to be with us before, he, um, but he rec- I think he recommended the usajobs.gov site. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really good. It's a great site. There's uh, the the great thing I like about the usajobs.gov is that they're very upfront about everything. So you know exactly what your pay scale is going to be. You know mm-hmm. exactly what kind of requirements you have. And it's not like a, a company where they kind of put together requirements and said maybe this, maybe that. Uh, what it says is is what's on the tin is in the tin. Right. <laughs> That's kind of the way those those uh, those job postings work. Um, but I, I will say, you know, again, the typical thing to remember is if it says. Uh, Anything under five years worth of previous experience, that's an entry level position. Uh, and that's that throws a lot of people because they don't think that they have three to five years of experience or they uh, are, you know, they're worried about not having that on their resume specifically. But a lot of times the skills, again, when you go back to right. looking at the, the skills that they're looking for for that position, uh, you can make a lot of those skills work if you just know how to word them correctly. Right. Yeah, there's certain there are certain requirements that are more guidelines that they're designed mm-hmm. to weed out. That it it doesn't hurt to kind of push it a little bit, right? right. So anything that's under five, you know, looking for under five years experience is basically anyone who getting into the field, right? Yeah, yep. Um, all right, so that's job listings. Are there other places that are good, good to look for jobs online? Well, you know what? LinkedIn is trying to be the one-stop shop, right? Uh-huh. Uh, so that's that's they have a really great job search function. You can put in just a keyword, and it returns a lot of job uh, a lot of jobs. And you can even limit it by regions. Um, one of the things that I really liked is in my area because we have um, the Tampa, uh, the city of Tampa, and the city of Saint Petersburg are so close together. Uh, instead of having to put in a search for T- uh, Tampa and a search for Saint Petersburg, they have something called the Greater Tampa Bay Area now, uh-huh. and that was a choice that LinkedIn made because they saw so, saw it happening so often. Uh, so it would be like the Bay Area in uh, California, you know, where you'd get uh, San Francisco and Oakland and right. all that group of things together. Um, and so that's I, – I like that they're keeping up with the algorithms of things that are going on. So if you don't mind the monolithic structure, <laughs> then uh, right. LinkedIn's a really good way to do it. And just creating a Google alert is a, another great way to – Make sure you're catching everything because oh, no Google, I don't want you right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but making an alert with Google is something that you can do to uh, uh, make sure that you're keeping up with like the whole web. And uh, if you need instructions on how to do that, I recommend that you check Google's because they get really gritty with it. You can go, you can dial all the way down to specific salary ranges and locations and the type of job that you're looking for and making sure that the description fits what's on your resume. If you just want to keep putting that same resume out there, you could find a way to do that too. Right. Um, so if you just look, f- look for alerts, uh, it'll, it'll teach you how to do that. They have a really good tutorial about how to, how to make a, an alert for searching. I'll try to find a link to put in the show notes for that. Cause that'd that, be great. Yeah. That would, that would be useful. Um, yeah, that's great. You know, one of the things that I, I found, uh, when I've used, um, online job listings is it can be hard to find, uh, the right job if you use, um, search, search terms that are too broad. Like mm-hmm. I, I work in communications. That's where I've always worked. So entering <laughs> yeah. communications and brings up all kinds of stuff. 
Um, right. and, and so you've got to figure out what's the best way to narrow it down to the sort of thing that I want to do in the range I want. I, I don't I'm not looking to be a communications an assistant communications coordinator couldn't raise my family right. on that salary, but you know I, I I would need a job at a, at a higher level that sort of thing if I was if I was looking. So you need to really think about the search terms that narrow down for the sort of job the the type of job you want. And the broader your search, the bigger the net, and the the more time you're going to spend wading through jobs that you're that you don't want. Right. And and it's really important. This is another, uh, you know, we'll talk about networking in a little bit too, but networking is incredibly important because there are job titles that don't fit a job description anymore. And yeah. it's because people are trying to get creative with, you know, what they're calling themselves or what they're doing. Right. Uh, but it makes it really hard as, as a, as a job hunter to find uh, that job that you're looking for when, when you're putting in a very narrow set of terms because you want this job. Like I'm looking right now for an information security analyst job. Uh, if I put that in, that eliminates uh, networking security analysts, which is something that I'm also interested right. in. Right. But then if I put in security analyst, I get all sorts of crazy stuff, business security analyst and like, uh, you know, just general analyst positions. Yep. So it's a trade off and you have to really be careful on that trade off and make sure that you got your, um, your finger on the pulse of, kind of what's happening uh, in the fields that you're interested in and what the job titles are that are going around. Gosh, I was thinking there must be someone like like a, the equivalent of a real estate broker for like a job broker who works <laughs> not for the company hiring, but for people looking for a job. Like you could hire someone to, to help fight to find you a job. You absolutely can. I um, There's uh, the, the church that I'm at. They have a work ministry that uh -huh. uh, meets once a month, and it's a fantastic group of people. It's all about networking and getting to know each other and finding out the resources that are in the area. And one of the ladies that comes, she is a professional resume writer. Mm. Uh, that's, that's her official title. But as part of that, she walks you through all of the different ways that um, you can search for jobs online, how to do the specific thing I'm talking about with your resume, where you are searching for the keywords and looking for different things. Um, she'll rewrite your resume. Uh, but the great thing was, is that, you know, she offers, she offers the, the two, two price points. One, I'll rewrite your resume for you and it's this cost, or I'll give you five sessions of how to rewrite your resume yourself. And it's a different cost, but it, you get, the ability to then go on and you don't, you don't have to come back to me to get it rewritten. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. That's a, that's something good to think about too, is just finding someone who will help you with some of the stuff. Cause it's, a, mm -hmm. it can be, I, I can imagine it could be overwhelming if I'm having to get into this, you know, it's already right. stressful looking for a job, but then adding all of this on top of it, it, it gets even harder. I would recommend that you look for career coaching um, yes. in your area because that's, uh, you know, as we, as we go into this next part talking about your resumes, one of the things that career coaches are really good about doing is looking at the resume you have for the job you want and telling you where you can uh, do better. And a lot of it you can get for free. Um, there, there are a ton of workshops online right now. And, and a majority of it is because those career coaches, they get paid by the county or the, the you know, the, the state that you're in uh, as part of, you know, transitioning people or, or right. uh, rehousing people into jobs. And there's a lot of money in that right now because of all of the stuff that's going on. Interesting. Interesting. Well, mm -hmm. let's let, let's move on to talking about resume creation. We've already kind of skimmed uh, uh, around it. Uh, so what. What kind of technology is there to help people with writing a resume if we're not if we're not going to hire a resume writer? Uh, yeah, so th this is this is where you're going to spend the most of your time in job hunting. So it's really important to get started here. The easiest thing to do is just take your resume and throw it into a word cloud. Uh, so you can go find a word cloud website online. I think Microsoft Word actually will do it for you now. They'll, they'll make a word cloud out mm. of a document for you um, and just do a word cloud out of your uh, resume. And then go find a, a description for a job that you like and do a word cloud out of that job, out of that job description, and see how they match up. Because that's basically what a computer is going to do. It's going to match up the, the weight of words that are in your resume to the weight of words that are in that job description. And if they don't look anything alike, then you got some work to do. All right. <laughs> if they, if they do look pretty, pretty close to alike then you're on the right path. You, that's the kind of job that you're, that you're looking at. That's the kind of job you have. Um, there are some websites that will do this for you. Uh, Resumebot.com. Uh, and I, I'll have Dom do the whole link for you because it's, uh, 
there's it's hard to find this little thing inside of resume bot but because they're a company that will write resumes for you uh it they have a job scan function where you can put in your resume on one side the job description on the other and then it will give you a percentage match and it will also throw in some recommendations for how you can change uh your job description what and and it it knows to look for um it's like a thesaurus kind of thing where it looks for similar words in yours that you can just change the word and you've got a description that matches what was going on mm-hmm. um, on the job scan. Uh, and then there's jobscan.co, which does that same thing, but it's a paid platform. And they'll continue to do it for you over and over and over again as you're searching for more jobs. But you get a few free, like you get, I think, one a month free. But, you know, if anybody who's actually looking for jobs, you know that you're putting out a whole lot more resumes than one a month. And, right. um, but this is a good idea, really, if you have a job already, it's a good idea to start doing some of this stuff for the job that you have already, just to keep your, um, your resume up to date. One of the guys that, that recommended these websites to me said that the last company that he was at, they did this with all of their jobs. They went to HR, got a, an official description of what their job was. And then they put their resume up against that description and it didn't beat the algorithm. <laughs> so they wouldn't be hired for their own position uh. based on the algorithm. Uh, so it's a good thing to, to kind of keep up with. If you haven't done it in a while, you know, if you haven't refreshed your resume in a while, uh, I would recommend starting here with doing the, the word cloud kind of thing or going to jobscan.co and getting that free one done. Um, just because that way, you know, then too. And the other thing that, that I found with this too, is it's taken some of the stuff that I'm doing at the job that I'm at, because I'm the, the tech teacher at the school that I'm at. Uh, and it's redirected some of the things that I'm doing to build that resume, uh, to what I want it to be. So I was doing some of the network things, but now I know specifically I need to be doing X, Y, and Z things on the network to be able to put them on my resume and have them as skills that I'm, that I'm using regularly in the job that I'm at. Interesting. So it, it, it can actually change what you're doing in your current job so you can prepare to get the job, the next job you want. Right. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So those are two, a couple of great resources and the word cloud thing. I think that's great. I'm thinking about my own like resume the last time I did it and I'm not sure it, it, this was a, a resume created in the form that Harvard did for its business school like mm-hmm. graduates, and I don't think it would work now. Like I don't think this works in the current environment. A, a lot of it's not. I I used to be you know I have a little bit of a graphic design kick to myself, and I had this really neat looking resume that I that I liked. I had a, a third column on one side and a two thirds column on the other side, and my skills were all listed over there, and my that thing got massacred online because yeah. <laughs> just the, the, you know, it doesn't like reading uh, the computers don't like reading things that aren't line by line written out. So I had to redo it in a very simple, plain format um, that I don't, I don't like, I don't like the way it looks, but I'm not handing it to anybody. So right. I, in, until I get into the interview to actually hand a copy to somebody, I don't even need to worry about the way that it looks physically because it's, going to show up on the computers i mean that's a big a big point about like about resume design is you don't need to stand out visually anymore in fact right. it's not you're trying to stand out in a pile of resumes on some hr director's desk your your resume is being input into a into a, uploaded into a, a website where some right. machine is going to look at it um so exactly. yeah so plain is best at first and and, and maybe like you kind of um, hinted at there and maybe have a second one for the day you go in and sit in front of somebody, you can hand them a good looking exactly. version of that. Uh, so that would be, that's an interesting idea. That's very, very interesting. Uh, so let's talk about that. We talk, we kind of talked a little bit about networking, but uh, how, how, what's the, the, a good way to use technology for networking with other people? Cause they say that the most people get jobs, not by, you know, blind resume, but, but by who they know and connecting with somebody and and getting a job that way. So what what are some good resources that you've heard of for that? 100% LinkedIn. Uh LinkedIn is a great site. Uh it it does have some social media elements to it. Uh so if you if you're tentative about social media, you will need to learn a little bit of it, but I will say you don't have to engage in the like constant stream of uh posts or anything like that. It's best if you do. 
but yeah. you don't have to. <laughs> uh, it, it, it has a job search function to it. It has uh, all of the different ways of connecting with people. And as you get to know people, you can message them and get to know other people that they know. Um, introductions are really easy that way. And more and more, anytime you meet with people at any kind of um, networking function, they're going to hand you their LinkedIn information to connect with. Hmm. So it's really important that you that you keep your LinkedIn uh, updated. And I would say even as a professional who is not planning on looking for a job anytime soon, just the networking aspect of it is really uh, it, it's tremendous because you are going to meet people that uh, that'll put you in touch with the people that you need to be in touch with to get something done. Right. Uh, so keep it up to date, you know, have a fresh profile picture on there. Uh, make sure that you don't keep the generic banner at the top. Uh, I think one of the uh, most interesting pieces of advice that I got about it was go in and put the skills that you actually have and make sure that you highlight the ones that you are currently using or that you're looking to use in your next job. Because uh, recruiters, when they're going through your LinkedIn profile, that's the first thing they look at is what skills you're highlighting on your LinkedIn page. Interesting. And so keep that fresh, keep that updated, and uh, make sure that people know it. But then I would recommend using meetups too. Uh, I know that in person is not a big thing that we're doing right now, <laughs> but in, yeah. in my area, uh, there are a lot of different um, job boards uh, or job groups that are meeting uh, via Zoom, and they're posting their meet. Uh, their meetings on Meetup, and that's where they they got connected. I think it's a website that I've mentioned before. Uh, and you just and you download the app, or you go to the website, you get signed up, and you tell it you tell the the website where you are, and it connects you to all sorts of different things in the area. So if you're a software developer, look for software development uh, meetups. If you are a communications director, look for uh, communications meetups. Uh, you would be surprised uh, the number of things that you can find, especially in a big city area. And it's a lot harder uh, in a smaller area to find all of that same kind of stuff. But even even in smaller areas, you, you can find some things. Uh, I have a friend that lives out in Idaho, and uh, she's found a lot of really interesting connections on uh, on meetups. And because they're virtual nowadays, and more and more of it's virtual, I mean, you could be getting meetups with people from, from a wide area. And if you're willing to move or work remotely, which is another thing we're doing, uh, that, that could be potentially useful as well. But one, Definitely. One thing I want to uh, mention about uh, LinkedIn, you mentioned like using LinkedIn's social media aspects like of posting things. Keep it professional. D mm. Don't post about unless it's unless you're looking for a job in politics stay away from politics stay away from controversial stuff um unless you're looking for a job in religion i wouldn't i wouldn't do a lot of religious posting on linkedin it's a that is a career focused site if you want to talk about religion and we'll and you know do it on facebook or on twitter right. or you know and i want to come back to actually other social media in general um in a minute but but uh, yeah if you're going to use linkedin use it to highlight to you know your professional uh face your the, the aspects of your particular skills that relate to the jobs that you're looking for um post interesting links to articles or other things like that mm -hmm. um that would be would be good um yeah and the meetups and the networking uh you mentioned a network work networking group at your parish which i think is awesome right. Um, but, uh, th those sorts of local things, I think uh, it, that would be a great ministry for a lot of parishes to do is definitely a social justice ministry of helping people who are, you know, trying to get a job. And, and a lot of it, I, I, it's really great because the, the guy that runs it at our, at our parish, uh, shout out to Lou, he's doing a fantastic job. Um, he doesn't really present anything himself all he does is he uses his networking skills to network with people to come in and talk to right. everybody you know so he'll get a resume writer to come in and speak to everybody he'll get uh, uh an hr director to come in and speak to everybody he'll get somebody who's successfully completed their job search to come in and, and share what their experience was uh and he's he's great about getting people that are engaging and and really that's what it comes down to is that you just need someone who's who's willing to talk about their experience Yep. And who's going to engage people so that they don't feel because the worst part about job hunting is that it's just demoralizing, <laughs> especially in our age where you send out a hundred resumes and you hear absolutely nothing back. Right. Uh, 
and and that and that's been my experience for a lot of the stuff that I've done, and it's because I've I've had to learn all of these things that I'm that I'm, that I'm sharing right now all along the way because I I had a monolithic resume that said exactly what my job description was and what I was doing, and I didn't realize that I needed to tailor it more uh, so that it was meeting those keyword criteria that I was just getting passed over in the algorithm bubble. Right. Right. Yeah. Having that support, like you said, when you're because it can be like you said, it can feel very lonely and demoralizing out there. Having that support, that that moral support is is key, too. That's that's Definitely. very good. So uh, what about um, uh, certification and training, uh, you know, b beefing up your skills and getting stuff to put on that resume? I, I think that's uh, that's a really key part, especially with a lot of tech jobs. Uh, but really, anything you're looking at anymore, there's um, th there are certifications that prove that you kind of know what you're doing. Uh, if you're in project management, you know the PMP is kind of the like gold standard there. Uh, if you're going for uh, security, there's a whole lot of uh, certifications that you can get um, online. And I, it used to be called Lynda.com. They're rebranding themselves. I don't know if, uh, if everybody's yeah. noticed this. Yep. I love Lynda.com. I I like that it's moving into this LinkedIn era. So it's called LinkedIn learning now. Um, and I, I recommend using it for all sorts of stuff. You may have access to it for free from your library. I mentioned that before, but I just want to remind everybody to check that out. Um, but even if you don't, uh, it really is actually worth it because when you complete courses in there, uh, now they start showing up as badges on your LinkedIn profile. And so, mm -hmm. Not only does it say that, like, I can go in and put that I have whatever skill and just say that I have that skill, but now what I have is a lynda.com or a LinkedIn learning uh, badge that says, nope, you've actually completed the, the requirements to meet this skill. So you've gone through this whole lesson set to to meet this skill. And and that can be really useful. That can be a great way to, to get connected to stuff. The other thing I would recommend is uh, check your county website. Uh, just go to whatever jobs website. If you go to USA Jobs, uh, they they do have links there through to local areas. So if you type in your um, uh, if you type in your uh, zip code, it'll show you some local links that you can use. There is a lot of money in the system right now for um, for getting jobs, for employment, for um, for job tech training, coaching, for job yep. training. Uh, so. Right now is a great time. I know. I know it. It sounds horrible because it's it's because so many people are out of work. But uh, there, it's a great time to really look at at upping where you are in your career and going to apply for some of those uh, grants and things that are out there is, is a really good idea. Yeah, I would say um, that you we should everyone should always be learning, always right. be trying to pick up new skills, whether you're looking for a new job or not. Uh, you know, getting a new skill in your current job is mm -hmm. it will help you be able to get a raise or, or something like that. I mean, I'm thinking of certain skills that I that I'd like to learn. In fact, I'm always trying to learn new things. One of my future picks of the week is going to be a, a a learning course uh, in some Mac automation stuff. Um, but yeah, you mentioned LinkedIn learning. I I did it with Linda. I got a job at a, a parish a few years ago where I was director of communications and I had to, I suddenly had to be the guy in charge of the bulletin, and I'm like, hmm, mm -hmm. I, I I have not used a Leo program in a while since uh, all this PageMaker, so I should be learning. <laughs> so I had to learn how to do. Uh, oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, oh, Adobe InDesign. I took the Linda course, and now I have that certification. Um, right. I, I've been doing uh, Adobe Audition audio editing for two years, more than two years now, with SQPN, but I I don't have it on you know as a something I've taken a course and certified in on my, my link, LinkedIn uh, profile. I bet I could, I bet I would learn stuff. Do it. In fact, I know oh, yeah. I would learn stuff taking the yeah. course. Um, <laughs> you always do. And then, and then you kick yourself because you're like, I should have done it two years ago. <laughs> exactly. Save myself so much time. <laughs> well, and I'm looking at the LinkedIn learning page and, and that's not the only place you can learn stuff. I mean, there's all kinds right. of places all over, but I'm looking at this going, okay. Um, Developing a fundraising video for nonprofits <laughs> mm -hmm. or for a lot of people, time management, working from home. Uh, that's mm -hmm. digital body language. Like there's a quick course. It's a 25 minute course and just how to present yourself when you're on a webcam. You know, that's a big one. Uh, but all kinds of stuff, sales um, uh, stuff. And what's interesting is because they know I have a LinkedIn profile, they show me 
these courses are trending in the religious institutions industry, which is right uh, where you know I spent a lot of my time working in church, you know, parishes and and a diocese. So you know, it's it's really interesting to you know because you have writing on your LinkedIn profile, that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. um, that I, it may be something I'm going to go back. I wish my 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 public library. I did look. My local public library doesn't have uh, uh, it, but it might sure. be worthwhile for <laughs> me to to do it. But like I said, there is all kinds of places to le to keep learning online. Uh, right. Duolingo, learn learn a language. Right. Oh, language is a big one. Yeah, definitely. If you, I mean, if you could be bilingual with uh, Spanish and English, like uh, especially in certain parts of the country, but but even like you know French or uh, uh or I mean all kinds of language. Like they're all. I'm not sure the Klingon will get you very far, but <laughs> unless you want to become a screenwriter for Star Trek, but you know there are a lot of uh, courses out there. You know most of those languages will help you. So that, that's yeah, well, and and look for look for the websites that are. I'm, there's some of them that are always offering uh, deals, like the quote unquote deals, where it's the the course normally costs 190 dollars, but you can get it right now for 10, and right. it's like. Okay, uh, I can do that, and I I will say some of those are not as as great as the uh, the courses that you're going to get from something like uh, LinkedIn Learning, but they give you that that basic knowledge that then gets you asking the right questions, right. and that's really you know increasing your Google foo is probably the most important thing you can do in getting ready for any job nowadays. Mm. Also, a lot of these offer a month free, and there's you can take a that's lot right. of courses in a month. Instead you of can, especially right now, you're not yeah. doing anything else. Yeah, Instead of binge well. watching Netflix, go go binge uh, some LinkedIn Learning or whatever. Uh, I, I keep saying LinkedIn Learning, but you know so, something the course that you're going to take. Right. Uh, what about podcasts? How do they fit into the certifications and training area? I I would say uh, for me and and this, my experience has been trying to get into the infosec community. Um, I've started listening to security podcasts. Uh, especially the ones that are about the things that I like. So networking or about um, open, open source security podcast. Um, the great thing about those is that they give you the terminology that you need to look for the right kind of job. And then once you've gotten to these networking positions, because there's so much jargon related to anything, especially in the tech field, but really anymore, there's just so many Any acronyms. Field, really, yeah. yeah, everything's got like all these acronyms and all these words that uh, you just need to know to be part of it. If you're moving from one uh, type of field to another, or even just uh, want to brush up on what people are talking about about your field, finding a podcast about your field or the field that you're interested in can be a really big benefit. And you just put that on while you're driving and you're you're learning something and, and you know they might not be the most interesting thing in the world but it, it, you're working it so it's probably going to make sense to you and it will probably be some somewhat interesting right because you kind of understand what's going on interesting that's really good i like that too uh, i mean i like podcasts so uh, right. any, any reason, <laughs> but yeah i i actually keep a wide breadth of different podcasts that i listen to because i I do a bunch of different kinds of podcasts. So, for instance, I listen to a lot of different tech podcasts because I want to stay up to date on what's going on in the in the in the field. And um, so, yeah, I think that's I think it's a great idea. So, I want to mention a couple of tips, tech related tips for people who are looking for jobs. So, these aren't specifically about finding the job, but about being the best you can be while you're looking for the job. And mm -hmm. one of those things is clean up your social media. Um, be be mindful of of what you look like to someone because trust me these days when you go for a job they're going to go you know maybe not when they're going through a hundred resumes but at some point in the hiring process they're going to look at your social media and they're going to want to know what kind of person are you online are you a, a flamethrower a bomb thrower um, are you someone who's always talking about controversial things maybe. I don't I don't want to say that you can never talk about politics or religion or anything controversial, that you shouldn't be um, forthright about your beliefs or whatnot. But you have to be aware that when you are being forthright about your beliefs, that's going to have an effect on the people who see it. Some may some may applaud it, but others may see that as a warning sign that I shouldn't hire this person. Don't hide. I'm not saying hide your light under a bushel basket. Basket, you know that, that you know that you're pro life or that you're a Christian or or what have you. But you know what kind of person are you online? Are you a mm -hmm. combative person? Are you snarky and mean to other people? 
or are you helpful? Uh, do you do you present yourself in a way that that someone would who comes along would say, I think I'd I'd be interested in working with someone like this. They're an interesting person. They have interesting hobbies. They're they're helpful to other people. They're kind to other people. So be mindful of your social media. It frankly probably lock down most of your social media. Now you don't want to be completely yeah. locked down. You want to have some public presence because they, you want them to be able to see that you're not hiding everything, everything right. about yourself. That's a, that's a little bit of a warning sign. Have or that a, you're completely disconnected too. That's, that's right. another kind of warning sign. Like, okay, you've, you've sworn off of all of this. Well, what does that mean if we need you to be involved in it? Exactly. Yes. So um, be, be mindful of your presence online. Google yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Look at your Facebook profile using the uh, public view. I think there's a button for that. Um, right. That sort of thing. Look at your Twitter if you've got that. Um, if you've got a blog, that's that's my big bane is I have a blog that goes back 20 years. I'm not <laughs> the same person I was 20 years ago, right. but, you know, <laughs> I, well, that's who I am. Uh, that's water under the ridge. Uh, but so that so that I would say that look at your social media, your 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 Internet footprint, really. Mm -hmm. um, and when if you're a young person and, or if you've got a teenager who's just getting into social media now. And and frankly, a lot of them are pretty savvy about this now. They're, they're more savvy than their, their parents are in many ways, but they need to be aware of, of, of this going forward because it's, right. you can't, you can't erase things off the internet really. Um, so better not to put it there in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they, they're yeah. always there. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, and then I would say, um, one thing that could be a useful tool for you is uh, you, even before you start looking for a job, but consider whether having your own website, like a, a blog that might be contain content related to your field that you're interested in uh, would be useful. I've um, my blog right now that I've had, like I said, I've had for 20 years in recent years, I've mainly been either doing some personal like vacation related blogging, but I do. I put a lot of stuff about podcasting there. I write about communications a lot. I do write sometimes about current things I see in the current events that aren't necessarily related because it's a blog. It's personal. Uh, but but having a, a blog that is not an obvious like I'm writing for people looking at me who might hire me sort of thing, but <laughs> but just something that kind of presents your own expertise in a field. Or right. you know a podcast even you know which uh, is a natural thing for me to suggest is. Uh, <laughs> that you might want to have a uh, a podcast <laughs> yeah. if you if you feel like you've got a voice and you you're able to talk about a subject that you know in an interesting way think about it that's a that's another excellent way to present yourself or if you uh, if you don't mind sitting in front of a camera a YouTube channel is not a bad idea oh yes yes uh, it, it it's a little Just harder develop a thick skin <laughs> <laughs> yeah right right and uh. and being on you know be doing video is a slightly higher level of skill necessary. But frankly, it's not a bad skill to have these days. And right. you might be, again, looking in a field where having that sort of skill and that sort of presentation might be an asset to somebody. And so but I will say it's it's in the it's one of the top 10 uh, skills looked for by uh, companies right now is videography or the ability to put together um, video lessons or video uh, mm -hmm. products like this. Right. Yep. So, yeah, think about that, that, that you're think about your presence online. So. Um, I think that, I think that's a good a brief <laughs> package. I mean, we could go on at length on this and there are actually a po whole podcast just about job hunting and the, the, the mm -hmm. job search. So you could find some out there. Uh, but if, uh, if you, the listener has any, uh, additional questions or insights or, uh, things you'd like to share about this topic, we'd love to hear from you. Of course, um, I'll repeat this at the end, but you can send an email to technology at sqpn.com, uh, and we'll share that in a future show. Uh, let's move on to talk about some headlines. There's some, uh, some interesting headlines to talk about this week. Uh, here, here's one. This is kind of a fun one because <laughs> I'm going to present this uh, a, a question to you in a second, Thomas. But uh, All right. this 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 Israeli company called Redefine Meat. So <laughs> you have an idea of where we're going with this. <laughs> says that it, it hopes to launch 3D printed steak alternatives in 2021. Uh, so we're it's it's sort of plant based meat, but we're going to the next level where we're going to 3D print it, and it's going to. They say look like meat, appearance, texture, and flavor of animal meat. So, Thomas, what do you think? Would you eat a three D printed steak? 
I, I actually would. Um, I I was blown away by some of the things that I've seen coming out uh, in the last few weeks uh, in research technology based on elast- uh, elasticity and uh, materials. And it, it, 3D printers are getting amazing. Like they uh-huh. are really uh, stepping up the game. And when you when you think about a 3D printer, um, you can print anything with it. It just the 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 limit is what what material you're able to put into it and how it's able to put that material out. And there were some really interesting other developments in elastics uh, in computer programming that have come out recently, where they can actually design a stake in th- in a three D modeling program that has all of the elasticity built into the uh, programming model. So when you stick a fork in it uh live times of like you were playing a video game and they had this steak on the plate and you stuck a fork in it and you pulled it apart it would pull apart just like a steak Hmm. and that was all done algorithmically and in real time which means that if you can do that you could then translate that into 3d printing you you could literally take okay well we've got this certain amount of fat content meat and then this certain amount of just uh, uh regular tougher meat that's going into it and you could put those things together I I am really interested to see where this goes, honestly. <laughs> it's um, fascinating. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> uh, frankly, if it's if it tastes like meat, smells like meat, the texture is the same as meat. I mean, if it if it's indistinguishable to my senses, then I don't have a problem. Like I'll uh, mm-hmm. I'll eat it. I mean, if and if it's nutritionally the same, you know, you know, or better. Okay. I mean, that, I mean the the whole point of I mean the the question is it, um, is do you have to be eating the actual meat or is it okay? Like, are you lying to yourself somehow? You know what I mean? Is, is right. there something inauthentic about, about pretending to eat something that's meat that isn't meat? But I, I don't know. I mean, we're getting close to Star Trek replicators here. That's what I'm trying to say is we're, this that's, is pretty amazing. That's really what it's starting to feel like. And it's, I, I think it's impressive that we, that we've jumped that gap to this point where we are actually talking about sustainable eating uh sustainable food um and i'm i am not i am not a vegetarian i'm not a, a vegan but i do avoid meat as much as i can and and it's mostly because um my, as my wife and i put it we're budgetarians you know we just have to <laughs> eat, eat what we can afford right uh so uh which tends to be mostly uh, a plant-based diet but still, you know every once in a while we'll have chicken or we'll have uh, we'll have beef when we can when we can swing it uh but the the industries that surround that if you've never read uh, super size me or um uh, fast food nation uh, you really should those are both kind of uh you know rel- uh, revelations uh in in the way that the the industry works around meat product mm. um it's it's good to know that we are getting to a point where we can replicate all of the things that go into meat, not just the, you know, not just the protein, because I think that's the kind of the, the, the lie right. for the longest time has been, well, the tofu is just like, uh, you know, this, this tofurkey is just like a real turkey. Yeah, and, no, and it, no. it's not. It's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> you know, but, but this kind of stuff, it, it's really getting there. I mean, they're, they're selling them at, at Burger King. I drove through Burger King the other day and they had, they had two, uh, Two of the the exact same croissant, which combos, you know, like the uh-huh. there's like the the sausage croissant and the sausage croissant. I'm like, what is the difference here? And I, when you read the fine print a little more, it's the the Incrediburger <laughs> style croissant, you know, the style right. sausage, and the other one, which is like the fake meat stuff. I, we're getting there. It's, I think it's I yeah. If they can market it and they feel like they can sell it at a fast food joint. Not not to not to say that their other meat is actual meat anyway, but right. that's, that's a well, whole that's different part story. of it, right? It, it's a bit of a low bar to get over to, to right. you know, comparing to the McDonald's burger. But but yeah. but honestly, I mean, I haven't tried any of these alternatives yet myself because of that that one time I had a veggie burger on a at a at a party, yeah. you know, that was just really a scarring experience. But <laughs> I, I'm I'm at the point where I'm ready to try you know, uh, one of these, but you know, if they can make a 3d printed fl- plant-based flank steak, you know, that mm-hmm. I can throw on the grill and get, and, and, and eat in my fajitas. I mean, that's, that's a very interesting idea. Uh, that was, I'm looking forward to that. And a lot of the stuff that goes into it is, is pretty shelf stable too. So you get a fresher. Meat. That's true out of it than you would uh you know at a at a restaurant that's had to freeze it or had to have it shipped from somewhere or 
I, you know, whatever. It's 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 a lot more if they can replicate it exactly. That's that's really what it yeah. comes down to. Is if if they can replicate it exactly, you get a fresher experience out of it. And I I am one who thinks that they can. I think I I yep. really do believe that this is. It's not that far away. I mean, they're saying 2021 in this article. Yeah. I, I I believe it. I think they could get there. Interesting. And if it might even be safer, like less prone to, like, mm-hmm. you know, raw meat is can be dangerous uh, right. if not handled correctly. And maybe plant-based meat, uh, they could eventually, I'm not sure. I don't even know actually whether it's safer or not b- b- uh, on the same level. Like if you left, if you left fake meat out, does it, does it, does it go bad? I don't know. I think it question. probably does, but I think the I think the the tubes that it comes in are are sealed so that okay. they're they're preserved until they're used. Basically, right. I mean, like if I leave a tomato on the counter for two hours or, or two days, not two hours, two days, it will eventually you know go bad. Right. But uh, you know, if I eat if <laughs> if I leave a steak on the counter for six hours, I leave a tomato on the counter for, counter for six hours. Uh, the steak will kill me. The tomato won't. You know? Exactly. Yeah. That's... I was gonna say there's there's a difference in toxicity there. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. Uh, all right. So let's talk about our next headline. This is an interesting one. Uh, the Martian city of the future is landing in Dubai, and it's going to be an out of this world experience. So what's happening is the uh, the, the United Arab Emirates is building a model a not like a small model i mean like a scale model of a mars science city in the desert outside of the uae outside of uh dubai i guess uh which it will which is sort of a a a prototype for a future mars city i mean we all think oh yeah the elon musk or the united states we're going to be the on the on mars build a colony there but it could be United Arab Emirates could be there before us creating a Mars city. Uh, and it's very interesting that this article talks about what goes into it, you know, the differences between building a mod, you know, a prototype here on Earth, which has full atmosphere and gravity versus what we find on Mars. But it, a the desert of the Arabian Peninsula is a pretty inhospitable, inhospitable place. That might be a pretty good place to do some of this research. It'll be interesting. And I, I think a lot of people forget the only limiter is the getting there part. And we have a company now that is working on that very diligently, right? very consistently, uh, has a great PR model. Uh, I, you know, they're not far from being able to make that dream of getting to Mars a reality. Once you get there, it's just a matter of construction. And... Right. Yes, there are limitations. Yes, there are some issues, but it's really it really just comes down to the materials that you can get there and using them in the right way. Right. Same as you would here. Can you get enough stuff there, stuff that that sustains life and get it built in a certain time frame and keep it maintained? Then you can live there. Yeah. I mean, there's some concerns about long term life in low gravity, uh, what that will do for things like reproduction and other other factors as well uh but you know I, i'm reading this article and it's it's kind of a fascinating thing to think about like the that the united arab emirates is is they're thinking long term about building a, mm-hmm. a, a place to live on mars this is not you know this is a i, I kind of think like elon musk and, and a few other people like him have really kind of ignited this conversation people are seriously looking forward to this whereas five or ten years ago it was sort of a crackpot idea like oh someday maybe we'll get there now it's people are taking this seriously and and we're not again the same thing going back to the to the uh you know the 3d printed meat we're really not that far from this stuff it's just that there's never been a uh the will to do it and i i think commercializing it has been interesting because it's caused that interest in it that fervor for right. it uh and the cost has been driven down dramatically because you have this very competitive company able to deliver on the things that they're promising and making things cheaper all along the way right right i just I, in fact i saw just this week that uh, uh or was it last week that um uh, spacex sorry the escaping for a second <laughs> uh launched the first space force mission which was a gps satellite it's nothing Nothing exciting like the Netflix show, <laughs> uh, but uh, but they launched the they they launched the first space force mission space force mission. They got it up there. It was cheap. It was they they did it under budget for you know uh, like it was just 
it's just becoming routine to send stuff into space. And they're talking that of getting the cost per pound down to like something where like, like an airline ticket cost, like you could mm -hmm. basically, you know, not soon, but within, you know, a decade or, or maybe a little more that you could get into orbit for the cost of what we pay to fly to London. You know, or, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. It's fascinating to me. Um, I mean, we're, and we're only a few years away from going back to the moon, you know, whereas I, I thought 10 years ago that this wasn't we were never going to go back in my lifetime, that maybe my kids would get to see it. Uh, well, I now, really had that sense, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now it's like they're they've, they're building the Artemis mission right now. So it's uh, pretty wild, pretty, pretty awesome time to be. <laughs> if you're a space fan, it's an awesome time to yeah. be a space fan. <laughs> Uh, let's look at our, our last headline. Uh, this one uh, comes a little close to home. And we've talked about this particular issue a few times. Uh, the, the city of Boston, the Boston Police Department, has announced that they will no longer use facial recognition technology uh, for their policing. Uh, basic, basically, they, yeah, <laughs> they point out something that we've talked about, which is that it's the algorithms for facial recognition are terrible for anyone other than uh, white men. Frank, frankly, and, and, and this right. isn't a, a racial thing or a political thing. It's just that people look different and the ca the cameras and the recognition stuff for skin that is darker <laughs> doesn't work well. It doesn't distinguish features yeah. as well. And so there are a lot of false positives. Uh, so wh what do you think of this one, Thomas? I thought this was a really good. This is a good decision. I like I like the fact that the decision is based on how the technology works and not just a knee jerk emotional uh, reaction to anything. It's just. Uh, they they ran the numbers and they said this stuff is not good. It doesn't do us any good to to use this technology. It's misleading. Um, it, it, it it's not good police work. Right, and that's that's great. I like that kind of decision. I don't want like a, a all facial recognition is bad. It just needs to stop. But this this use of it is definitely one that it, it's not robust enough to do this. First off, and it's. Um, I don't know that it ever will be without a lot of redirection on how it's used and how it's made, but it really doesn't belong in this kind of situation anyway. Right. You know, this is another area where I feel like Hollywood bears some responsibility for mm. this because TV shows and movies have given us this false idea that facial recognition t uh, technology, like fingerprinting technology or DNA technology, is this simple press a few buttons. Uh, the computer will run a bunch of pictures through on the screen, which is why that's not useful, really. Uh, it would do it all <laughs> without having to do that. And then pop up. This is your guy. Like as if right. that's how it works, or this is the matching fingerprint. It doesn't work that way. It it, <laughs> it none of this technology of those three technologies work as well as they do on TV. Yeah, well, and and even just the the stuff on TV where they're like they'll pull up a, an image from a security camera and say, "Can you clear that up?" And then they Enhance. zoom in, and, and suddenly it's like, <laughs> "Wow, uh, that's just that's not how these things work at all." And so right. you got this blurry, pixelated image of this person taken in bad lighting with bad shadows and on top of that the algorithm is designed only to look for these particular types of shadow points on the face and it's a recipe for disaster it's a recipe for failure every right. single time and, and the numbers were abysmal the numbers were under 50 percent for the success rate on these things so yes I, it's just it might as well toss a coin you know, you might as well just flip a coin and say, I guess this is our guy. Here we go. <laughs> right. In, in fact, they, this article that we linked to is, has a description of a real world case where this guy, a black man living in Michigan, was arrested when the, the Detroit police using automatic facial recognition matched his old driver's license photo to a sto store's blurry surveillance footage of a man oh allegedly stealing watches. Yeah. Like some terrible camera, some cheap knockoff that, you know what I mean? Like just it, it, bad lighting, probably out of focus. And, and and they arrested him on this basis. This poor guy who spent the night in jail and now has a, a an arrest on his record for nothing. And as they say nowadays, you know, uh, get you know, black men getting arrested by police can can lead to bad things and and that sort of stuff. And whether whether that you you believe it or not, the guy got arrested, and that's just it's terrible yeah. right there on top of it. So yeah, I I'm with you on this. I think uh, w until this technology is nearly a hundred percent, you know, ninety eight percent or something, or, or, or really high anyway, uh, we should not be using this in policing 
uh, or anything like that. So I, I agree with that. All right. So uh, let's move on to our picks of the week. Uh, there's just the two of us. So uh, I'll let you go first. Uh, for, what's what's right. your pick of the week, Thomas? So my pick of the week is a browser alternative. Um, you've heard all the big names. Uh, they've all come into play. I think we've mentioned on the program before the Brave web browser, which is a really good um, security-minded web browser. Uh, one of the things I don't like about the Brave web browser is that because it's from the Chromium, Chrome side of things, so it's like kind of a, a knockoff of Google Chrome that's been uh, hacked around to make a secure uh, browsers, they had to cut out a lot of functionality. And so there were a lot of things missing from Brave that I missed, <laughs> that I was not fond of being without. And so I went on a search for another one that was security minded, but also had like a full fledged functionality. And I found one called Vivaldi. Uh, which is a secure browser. So it does a lot of the same stuff that um, that Brave does. It also has a VPN system incorporated into it that's pretty robust. I've been kind of surprised at times that I found myself on a VPN while using uh, Vivaldi. So uh, that's a really nice uh, function of it, that it, it will route you through places on the internet so that your IP address is not immediately recognizable by the, the end uh, uh, website. Uh, but it's based on the old Opera uh, web browser. So that's why it's it's different than Brave because they didn't have to cut out a whole bunch of junk. Uh, and they were able to bring in a lot of the Opera functionality, which was, was a really great browser in and of itself, but it just didn't get enough press and kind of has fallen out of uh, uh, fallen out of use. But I, I recommend it. Give it a try. It's a different feel. Uh, it does allow you a lot of customization. So, you know, be aware anytime you use something that allows you customization, that means that they're not assuming anything from the get-go. So you might be, uh, you might feel a little out of sorts at first. Um, one of the cool things that they're doing, they just brought into Microsoft Edge uh, tabs on the left. Yep. Uh, so if anybody's been using that, that's really cool. That's been in Vivaldi. Vivaldi has had that for quite a while. Mm. And it, it is a game changer in the way that you, <laughs> that you interact <laughs> with websites. So I definitely recommend giving it a try. And if you're not one of those people that has like a bazillion websites open all at one time, uh, tabs on the left is a really good idea. I honestly recommend it too. <laughs> <laughs> Does it uh, work with any extensions? Um, like yes. That? Uh, yeah, they're, they, now they have their own sort of extension environment. Uh, so it's not like you can go get all the same stuff that you got on Chrome, but a lot of the extensions that you had on Chrome uh, or or on Brave or whatever, uh, they are used that you can find their analogs in the Vivaldi um, oh, okay. extension. Yes. I have a handful that are just musts for me, like mm -hmm. 1Password and uh, everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that sort of thing. So Yeah, you'll find a lot of those in there. Definitely. Awesome. Awesome. That's cool. My pick is an iOS app, and it's 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 kind of sort of unique because what I'm picking is a particular feature in this app. I, I'm not sure how the rest of how well the rest of this app works, but this feature <laughs> is worth the price of admission. Which is uh, so it's called Controller for HomeKit, and what it does is uh, it you can, it's free. There's a free to download version, and then there's an in-app purchase for nine bucks, and for nine bucks, one of the features you get is that you can back up your HomeKit uh, setup, which if you have more than a few HomeKit devices in your house, bulbs and other things like that, um, and if you spent any amount of time setting up your smart home <laughs> and then you have something go wrong, like something gets deleted or that gets corrupt and you have to take it all down and re-put it back together, that is a laborious process and you do not want to have to do that. <laughs> this will do backups and restores of your home kit setup. So um, if you use home kit at all, this, this is a, a, just for the nine bucks. Now it does a bunch of other stuff too. It will let you set, um, have different setups. Like you can have um, one of the things that someone suggested is you could have a winter setup and a summer setup for your home. Mm. So uh, or you can have multiple homes, like like a vacation home that that you can have a winter setting. So we don't go to the to the lake house in the you know I don't, I don't have a lake house, but you know <laughs> it, I don't, we don't go to the lake house in the winter. So we have certain settings for the winter there. But in the summer, we wanted to have these you know summertime settings. Or you know there's there's different things you could do, and it's I mean it's got a ton of different uh, options and sort of stuff. But the big one is the ability to back up and restore your all your home kit set up all of all your devices and the way they're set up in the rooms are in the zones the device names 
all the, all the automations, the scenes, all that sort of stuff is backed up. And that is worth the price of admission because I mean, just backups in general are important, but this, oh, yeah. this is another good, <laughs> you, you uh, I should point out Apple does back up your home kit data, but only as part of the iOS backup. So you can't really separate that out. So mm. you'd have to restore your phone or your iPad to get that, all that back. It's, you, you don't want to do that. So this is just key, it backs just your home kit data up, which is good. Um, so that's, that's my pick of the week and I'll do it. So, um, before we, we go, I'd like to th- take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of technology, including Nicholas W., Janet K., Nancy, Jeffrey W., and Dennis H. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of technology in all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. So that's it from us. Uh, what do you think of our discussion about job hunting online in 2020? You can let us know by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash technology or the SQPN Facebook page, facebook.com slash StarQuest Media, or send an email to technology at sqpn.com. And you'll find links from our discussion, all the links that we talked about, and our picks of the week in our show notes at sqpn.com. Remember to like the each episode of Secrets of Tech on Facebook and retweet them on Twitter where we're at SQPN and engage with us there online. We'd love to engage with you all on social media. Just make it professional and courteous <laughs> right. in case an HR director sees it. Uh, so until next time, Thomas Sanderho, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of technology. It was a pleasure, Dom. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the secrets of technology on StarQuest. <laughs>